Viv is the best batsman I've seen against anything and everything. He never looked intimidated. Richard Hadley in New Zealand, Dennis Lilly in Australia, Abdul Qadir in Pakistan, Bishan Bedi in India. He got runs against anybody and everybody. This was Michael Holding, one of those lucky to have a front row seat for some of the greatest batting the game has seen, describing his teammate Sir Viv Richards. Sir Vivian Richards, also known as King Viv, had a way about him. Even when he was just walking around the crease, he was a batsman like no other. His batting style was described as swagger by many. The swagger was not just in his walk to the crease that was so majestic and instilled fear in the minds of the opposition players, but in his batting too. Sir Isaac Vivian Richards still remains the most feared batsman in the history of the game. During the time when the boundaries were big and bats were small and thin, Sir Viv smacked them higher and longer than anyone does with all possible factors going in their favour. Surely you have heard your parents or grandparents say, Viv is the greatest. Surely you have heard that uncle or aunt of yours scoff at you when you admire Virat Kohli, Chris Gale or A.B. De Villiers. Kid, have you ever seen Richards bat? Well, there is a reason for that. So today, we dive into the legacy of one of the greatest batsmen the sport has ever seen, Sir Vivian Richards. Vivian Richards' journey began in the sunny Caribbean island of Antigua. Growing up in a small village, cricket became his passion from an early age. With limited resources, he honed his skills on dusty streets, playing with improvised bats and balls. But did you know, he was equally good at football having represented Antigua in the qualifying matches for the 1974 World Cup. Thankfully, due to his father, Richard's focus turned to cricket. In November 1974, Richards made his test debut against India in Bangalore, falling to Bhagwat Chandrasekhar for 4 and 3. Surprisingly though, the selectors dropped Chandra for the next test and this was the match where Richards showed the world that he was not some ordinary player. He slammed 192 not out and as a result, West Indies won the match by an innings and 17 runs. Hey, by the way, I work really hard on these videos and I would really appreciate if you just like the video and subscribe to my channel. It was in 1976 when he actually established himself as one of the best and most feared players in the world. In 1976 at home against India, Viv came into his own, scoring three centuries at an average of 92.5. His 142 at Barbados and 177 at Trinidad destroyed the Indian spinners like no batsman has ever done before. The 1976 tour of England saw Viv Richards traversing realms in batting domination in regions of the sublime. No West Indies batsman, be it George Headley, Everton Beeks or Gary Sobers was as majestic as Viv. In many ways, Viv was like a medley of all those greats. His figures were staggering compiling 829 runs at an average of 118.42 with 3 centuries. But more than the records, it was the effortless ease with which he batted. In 1976, he aggregated a record 1,710 runs for a calendar year at an average of 90 runs with 7 centuries. This record was unbeaten for around 3 decades after that, until Muhammad Yusuf broke it in 2006. Richard's love for the game can be felt by this statement. I never wore a helmet. It made me much more aware watching the ball. I knew that one small mistake and it could be fatal. If it happens on the cricketing field, the place I love, I wouldn't mind one bit. That's the way I would have loved to have gone. The crowd of the 70s and 80s demanded nothing but entertainment from Richards. And he served, with a batting average of 50 plus and over 8000 plus test runs, at an impressive average of 50.23 and 24 centuries and 45 half centuries in test cricket. Richards was like a storm in the field. In One Day Internationals, Richard scored 6,721 runs in 187 matches at an outstanding average of 47 and had a strike rate of 90 plus when he retired, a feat which wasn't too easy in those days. Richard Hadley, one of the greatest pacers the game has ever seen, right? But does Richard scare? Well, can you believe it? As a batsman, he always looked to dominate the bowling and his aggressive approach often appeared arrogant to the onlooker. His lightning fast reflexes and brute force made up for his unconventional technique and for many years, he held the record for most sixes at test level with 84. There were several times when he proved to be the deciding factor as in the final of the 1979 World Cup where he scored a century to secure the win for his nation. However, the ODI match on May 31, 1984 against England is unforgettable. To this day, that day is remembered as one of the greatest ODI innings ever. It was the first ODI in the three-match series and for West Indies. The day did not start as planned as soon. They were in deep trouble when the score became 102 for 7. The victory looked almost in favour of the Englishman. 
except for one big and dangerous hurdle. The last man Michael holding along with Richards became a power duo on the field that day. They scored 106 runs with Richards scoring 93 of that which helped the team to finish at a massive 272 runs in 55 overs. Richards in his inning scored an astonishing record of 189 runs in 170 balls including 21 fours and 5 sixes. West Indies won the match by 102 runs and the series by 2-1. When he took over as captain of the West Indies from Cliff Lloyd in 1980, he proceeded to lead the team through the most successful era at test level. He captained them to 27 wins in 50 tests between 1980 and 1991, while also maintaining his reputation as the world's best batsman over the same period. Under his captaincy, West Indies never lost even a single series, making him the only West Indies captain to never lose a test series. In 1986, he scored a sensational 110 against England in Antigua, reaching his 100 of only 56 balls, then the fastest ever century in Test cricket. This record stood for 30 years until it was broken in 2016. By the end of his glorious ODI career, Richards had made three 150 plus scores and won 31 Player of the Match awards in just 187 matches. Every now and then, someone asks the question how will Viv Richards perform in the T20 era? Well, when you look at these stats, you cannot help but think he would rule the format. But I know someone out there might be thinking, well, Richards was lucky to never face the dominant bowling attack of the West Indies, right? Then allow Michael Holding to answer that. He destroyed a lot of bowlers in the Caribbean. He didn't play against the West Indies bowlers internationally, but he played against us domestically and he got runs against each team. Today, Sir Vivian Richards' legacy lives on. His name is etched in cricketing history as one of the most dynamic and influential players ever to grace the pitch. He remains an icon, a hero and a role model for the generations to come. And there you have it folks, the story of Sir Vivian Richards, a cricketing marvel, a true legend and an embodiment of cricket spirit. Join us again soon for more fascinating tales from the world of cricket. Until then, keep watching, keep playing and keep loving the game. See you soon.